it's finally time I get on camera and talk about ride makers. You may have heard of that before. I'm not affiliated with ride makers at all. Uh, just happens to be that when I was at the 2013 VidCon with my buddy Everett, uh, this was right out in, uh, what was it, Disney, downtown Disney, which is right where the conference was. And I happened to pick up a very school, school, school cool accessory. I thought you'd want to have a look at this because I know that you're going to love this. Kaboom! Right here. Let me get closer. I paid $6.99 for this. US, I think. Might have been $5.99. Don't worry, it's just the packaging. Look at this. Let me get out of the way so it'll focus on it. Look at it. Look at, I'll change it like that. This is a scale engine. Now, it does not work. It is just for looks. Now, it's got the hosing on it. It's got the, uh, none of this turns, but the one cool thing it does is open and close the front valves, right? Now, I figured with something like this, I would do a very cool build. And so I've been collecting all these parts for months and all these parts were for the beast. Now I'm always planning months ahead trying to figure out what we're going to do in the winter season, spring, fall, that kind of idea. That's why I wanted to do this build now. So with this part that I've been holding on to since August, I think I want to show you what makes this so cool. Let's bring in the camera a little bit. All right, so this little tiny scale accessory, forgive my fingers, I've been working on trucks all day, all stained up. But this little accessory right here, I thought was too much, just over the top for the $6 that I paid for it there about, especially with these, well, can I get it to focus? Especially with the braided cables, the valve covers that have been done well, and of course, this belt up front. Now, this is RC for me. I'd put any engine into any vehicle. I don't really have a brand war or a proprietary issue because everything usually fits together. But let me show you something fun that you can add to this that I got from an idea back from a competitor in the Axle Twisters 2009 TTC. I've always wanted to do something like this for my audience. Okay, so, drill bit. <laughs> Notice here on the valve covers, right here, they have these four points. Now I'm not going for scaleness, I'm just going for coolness. It's hollow, so you're able to drill in to a point. I'm just going to do four of these, right beside them, there we are. I think Ride Makers actually has a website, I uh, just didn't look it up. Eight. Get these out of the way, give my engine a blow. <laughs> there we go. Now, what I always liked seeing was some sort of uh, originality. Now, let me grab my bag here. Originality uh, in creativity in making your vehicles your own. Here is a little piece of wire I had for an electric tester. I don't really use it anymore, a voltmeter. So I'm going to use this wire and cable off of, uh, off of this piece. Red wire. You know, the gauge is pretty small. Small enough, but still going to be pretty cool. Now my whole goal for this is to actually um, get some spark plug wires. Or, you know, even though it might not be perfect, make it look like spark plug wires. Why not? Something so simple. There, it kind of fits in the hole. 
first one is going to be the longest, the way I would do it. So I'll put it, I'll just kind of dry fit it, put it in the hole there. That's what she said. Kind of loop it and bring it to the back. Now, you see that? There's a reason why I'm doing this. This is an imaginary motor or yeah. So I'm going to do something pretty imaginary. I'm just going to cut that off. The other thing I'm going to do is screw a hole or drill a hole right into the back. You can see there's two little stars there. I'm just going to drill right in the middle. I know, unrealistic, but still, for a toy and using imagination, still pretty cool. The reason why I've done this is just so I can hide the end. Okay, so now I want that whole thing to run. Perfect. Now, I'm not going to do this and drill in every single one. Obviously, because number one, I would need more wire, which I do have. But things get shorter as you move down the line. So I'll just do this one. Sorry, my hand's in the way. Kind of spread it out, good. I'm gonna cut it right, right there. Good. Another one. See, creativity. All you guys gotta do is look around, see what's available. I'm always on the hunt for new and cool scale accessories, you know? And this, when I got this for six, six bucks, big score on that one. Now, all of these, let's make sure that's in the hole. All of these are secured by pushing it into these holes. The only thing I have to do now, and get my fingers out of the way, is we did have that one that I pushed through the back. Right back here. Let me get in closer. Okay. The rest of these, I kind of want to just bunch up because this is going to be facing the rear of the vehicle anyway. You see that? I'm going to drop some glue in there right now. Of all things, it's going to be tire glue. Pretty simple stuff. Tire glue. Sticky, sticky, sticky. So I'm not going to use too much because it's all plastic on plastic and I only need a dab. A dab will do you. There we go. And if you want, you can give the uh, the um, the wires uh, a dab, but I don't really even need to because I'm not going to be giving this a lot of abuse, so it can just kind of stay stuck in there. Now, what do you think? That's not too bad, hey? Ta-da! Da -da 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 -da. Now, I love this because this has the ability to uh, have a servo attached to it for the throttle. That's what I came up with, but it's so small, I'm gonna have to build a custom wire and a Y cable to make it when I push the throttle on the receiver and the wheels start to go that it opens these valves. Now, I'm gonna do this on the other side, but just to keep today's video kind of short, I'm gonna show you one that's already completed and installed. All right, you wanted it, you got it. There you go, the beast. Not quite completed yet. I'm still waiting on parts. It'll take a couple of weeks to get to me. Uh, for example, the front steering link. Huh? I'm having one uh, custom made so we can get around uh, the front axle with these high steering links or high steering knuckles. I also have fresh Delrin links being produced right now by Blue Monkey, I think is where I'm getting them from, if he gets them to me in time, uh, to help change out this, the, the sitting of these axles. For example, I wanna get rid of this bend down here uh, in this uh, drive shaft because it's too much of an extreme angle. You can see that this one's totally okay. There's barely any angle at all, but because of the links are too short here, it kind of clocks my axle in and I get this, uh, you know, almost not a 90 degree angle by far, but about at least a 70. Anyway, check it out. Oh yeah, my painting. My painting's not done. Don't worry. Please don't freak out. I've just started getting some rust color on there. But what do you think? I know you can't see. Let me get you in there. Come on, come on. There we go. Now behind the fuel cell. Behind the cage, there's the motor. Now, I'll change this around. I'll, I'll show you a proper way. 
Here we go. Okay, so there's the motor. And if I can, sorry guys, it's inside the cage already. All right. I'll change it back this way, you can see it. I have not set up the servo. Okay, everybody who's asking me about this cut area uh, for the tubing, don't worry, I'm gonna be rebrazing this area just to go around the mount. I had to put it in there uh, simply to get my dual motors in there. Now, the aesthetic motor, that does not work. It's not uh, a, a functioning, it's just for appearance. Here, let me back up again, you guys get a better look. There, is that okay? Now, one of the things I did was put in a plate at the bottom. There you go, you can see it right there. A big plate here. Now, I wanted to have this motor do something than just be looked at. So what I did was I took one of my hex wrenches. Here, let me get you even in even closer. I'm the one adjusting the camera, so sorry for the non-smoothness. Ah! <laughs> Come on, focus. There we go. Let's get in even a little bit more. Okay, so right here. This is uh, an extension of the slipper clutch. This is the nut that normally I would at attach the slipper clutch to. But what I did was I took one of my uh, wrenches, hex wrenches. Where is one? I can't find one, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Just a normal wheel wrench. I put this whole engine on Velcro. Check it out. Kaboom, I can slide it out. Okay, I drilled a hole right in the end of this. Just in a little bit, right? Just a, like about, uh, well you can see right there, five, five centimeters maybe, or five centimeters, five millimeters, bleh. There is the drive shaft sticking out. Now, when the truck actually rolls, so does that shaft move, right? Because it's on the slipper clutch. So I figured, shit, cool. I could drop this in on, uh, on Velcro. Come on, lift it up. Get on there. Gotta line it up, perfect. There we go. So when it's like that, now it's mounted. Back it up to the little screen again. And when it goes back and forth, so does See, the engine rumbles a bit. It's hard to see, guys, sorry. It's because I don't have it in gear right now. Let me back it up a little bit more for you. See if that'll help. Straighten up these tires. Here we go. And, yeah, there we go. You can see the engine move a little bit. And that shaft is spinning coming from the base of the engine. So it gives us a little bit of reality. Sorry, I know my cameramanship on that was pretty lame. Uh, <laughs> but to show you, yeah. Also, everyone was asking me about uh, the battery. Is the battery gonna fit in there? Let me see. Kablammo! There it is. A uh, big three cell uh, Gens Ace 5000 milliamp battery. Got tons of power. What's the discharge rate on it? Uh, 40C. So plenty of power to push out to these dual uh, Tekken 35s. I have not done the receiver. Uh, I'm waiting for the receiver in the mail again. It's gonna take at least a week to get here. Uh, so we probably won't be revisiting this truck right away for at least a week. Uh, Cause then I'll do the wiring and I'll do the uh, ESC and the receiver. Check it out. Yesterday's video I had Everett on the uh, on the forklift for the first time. This is uh, the winch that he was pulling around. I, it is the RC four wheel drive Bulldog, I believe it is. Yeah, I, it, I believe, I believe it is. How many times can I say that? <laughs> uh, and I don't have the winch controller for it yet. I'm actually ordering um, the wireless one right now. Again, it just takes time to get to me. So with all the parts that I'm waiting for right now, we're gonna have to kind of put this one on hold. Don't worry, I've got another project I can start on here right away. Something we can take outside uh, sooner than later. Uh, and uh, everything should work out. Ah, stay there. Look at that, not bad. It's coming along pretty good. I love this engine in the back. I think it's a great feature. Oh, let me see here, done. 
done. Well, we gotta mount up the front posts and then the side posts. Uh, full extension, full lift. There we go. What do you think of that, guys? Post up your comments in the comments section below. And I hope I earned your subscription today. See you next time.